Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive with us. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that I think is fascinating. I'm sure you've seen a lot about it in the news lately, which is AI and education. Yeah, it seems like it's everywhere these days, right? Mm -hmm. It really does. And we've got some really interesting sources here that yeah. I think are going to give us a lot to unpack. Definitely. So let it dive right in. The first article we looked at, which is the September 6th Wayfinder article, really brings up this dilemma that I think a lot of schools are facing right now, which is students are using AI, but there aren't really clear guidelines or policies yet in place in a lot of schools. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how quickly things are changing. And like you said, that Wayfinder article brought up this really um, helpful framework from yeah. designingschools.org called Spare Arc. Oh, I love a good acronym. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so Spark is all about trying to figure out, okay, how do we actually navigate this new world where AI is a very real presence in the classroom? Okay. And a big part of that is moving away from this idea of like either or, or thinking like either we ban AI completely or we just let it completely take over mm -hmm. and moving towards more of a both and approach. Both and, okay. And a, a quote from this article that really stuck with me was by Joseph Grenny, and he says, Never opt for the tyranny of either or when the genius of both and is at your fingertips. Wow. Okay. I'm going to write that down, the genius of both, and I love that. So yeah. what does that look like, practically speaking? So for a teacher in the classroom, it's really about thinking about how can AI actually enhance what I'm already doing? Mm -hmm. How did it make me even better at my job rather than thinking about it as something that's going to replace me? Right. So it's about using it as a tool to amplify your expertise as a teacher. Got it. So instead of replacing a teacher, it's more like giving them superpowers. Exactly. Yeah, like giving them superpowers. That's a great way to put it. And you know, what reminded me of that was actually um, that example in the article about the math and art exhibition. Oh, yeah. I mean, cool. who knew you could combine math and art in that way, right? It, right. And it's a great example of using AI to really boost creativity. Totally. And the students weren't just like passively using the AI either, right? They actually had to learn the concepts behind it and make choices about how to use the AI to create their art. Exactly. And it wasn't replacing their creativity. It was just giving them new tools to express themselves. I love that. And speaking of people using AI in really innovative ways, um, the Wayfinder articles from September 20th and 27th both talked about Brian Setzer and the work he's doing at the Setzer Group. Yeah, Brian Setzer is doing some really fascinating work with AI and education. Yeah, and he's using it in his presentations, right? Like yeah. he's not afraid to let people know, hey, I'm using AI to make these presentations even better. Right, and I think that's so important because it helps to demystify it a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Because I think a lot of times people hear AI and they think, oh, it's this like scary, complicated thing. But when you see someone like Brian using it in a really practical way, it makes it a lot less intimidating. Yeah, for sure. So how is he actually using it in his presentations? So one way he's using it is through data visualization. Mm -hmm. So he can use AI to take complex data and turn it into these really easy to understand graphs and charts. Oh, that's so smart. So that makes his presentations more engaging and easier for people to follow. Totally. And I bet it saves him a ton of time, too. Exactly. And for anyone listening who's interested in learning more about this, he and the Setzer Group offer some free micro courses on this topic. Oh, that's awesome. I'll have to check those out. Yeah, they're really great. Yeah. But, you know, this isn't just about individual teachers or presenters using AI. It's about how this technology is going to transform the entire education system. Right. And that's where the Talent Next framework comes in. Exactly. Yeah. So KnowledgeWorks put out this really interesting document about future educator roles. Yes. And it talks about how AI is going to create all these new roles in education that we've never even seen before. I know, right? It's kind of like looking into a crystal ball. It's a little bit like, okay, is this really what the future is going to look like? It's so interesting. Yeah, it's exciting and maybe a little daunting too. Mm -hmm. But this document highlights three roles in particular that I think are worth talking about. The chief opportunity officer, the AI advisor, and the continuous improvement coordinator. Okay, so let's break those down a little bit because just hearing those titles, I'm not totally sure I could explain to someone like what those jobs actually entail. Yeah, so starting with the... Chief Opportunity Officer. Okay. Imagine someone whose entire job is to figure out where AI can make the biggest positive impact in a school or a district. Okay. So they're not just thinking about the technology itself, but they're thinking about how that technology can be used to solve real problems and create new opportunities. 
So they're like the AI strategists making sure that it's actually being used in a way that benefits everyone. Exactly. And the document actually gave a really good example. They talked about Morgan Drawfun from the Setzer Group and how they often work with schools to kind of do this exact thing. Oh, wow. So they're like real life chief opportunity officers. Pretty much. Yeah. And then you've got the AI advisor. OK, so if the chief opportunity officer is the strategist, what does the AI advisor do? I think of them more as the coach. So they're the ones who are helping teachers and administrators actually understand and use AI effectively. Okay, so they're providing training support, that kind of thing. Exactly, and they're not just giving like generic advice either. The document mentioned Adam Renfro, another Setzer Group team member, and he uses this thing called the jobs to be done theory in his AI advising. The jobs to be done theory. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Can you remind me what that is again? Yeah, so basically it's about focusing on the outcome you want to achieve, not just the technology itself. So instead of saying, we need to use AI for this, you would say, what's the job we're trying to get done and could AI help us do it better? Oh, okay, that makes sense. So it's about finding the right tool for the job, not just using AI for the sake of using AI. Exactly, and then the third role, the continuous improvement coordinator, they're all about data. Okay. They use AI to analyze data and figure out how to constantly improve. So they're like the data detectives looking for ways to make things better. Exactly. And the document highlights Tracy Curry at Setzer Group, who uses AI to do this kind of data analysis and identify areas for improvement. Wow. It's amazing to think about how all of these roles could really change the landscape of education. It really is. Yeah. And it just goes to show that AI isn't just about technology. It's about people and how we can use technology to make our lives better. I completely agree with that. And, you know, thinking about all of this, it makes me wonder, like, what aspects of our own work or learning could be enhanced by AI if we let it? Right. What could we automate or delegate to AI yeah. that would free us up to focus on the things that we're really good at, the things that we're passionate about? It's a really interesting question to think about. And it's not just about education either, right? This applies to so many different fields. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think the more we can start to think about AI in this way as a tool that can augment our own abilities, the more we can unlock its true potential. I couldn't agree more. And I think this deep dive has really given us a lot to think about. Definitely. And I hope it's inspired some of our listeners to maybe even explore these ideas further. Yeah, I hope so, too. Thanks for diving in with us today. This was a really fascinating conversation. Yeah, this was great. And for all of you listening out there, we'd love to hear your thoughts, too. What aspect of your work or learning could AI enhance, and how would you use that newfound freedom? Let us know. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep asking those big, important questions. 